Um, I'm Anna Harris, uh, the Conserving the Future coordinator, and I presented at the Friends Academy this summer. And some feedback during the Academy was that we should host a webinar to have friends go through the process of joining the social network and seeing where the draft products are, but also making this uh, webinar available so that you can take it back and show to your friends' boards meetings and at other places for your group. For, um, thanks again for calling in and being a part of this. And you know, this is a learning experience for me tonight with you folks. And so at the end, I'm hoping for you know, if you have questions or feedback how to make this smoother or um, setting up these calls in the future. So we really, I value your feedback and I really enjoy working with friends. As you guys are sort of the ambassadors for the refuge system on the ground and in the field. So I appreciate um, the advice and support you give to us. So I'll go over a little bit of how we got here. Um, I hope by this point most of you are familiar with the Conserving the Future vision, but I'll do a short summary on it. I'll speak uh, to the communications, uh, the community partnerships, excuse me, implementation team, and then really go into detail about how you can be involved in providing draft comments and feedback during implementation for the team. So, We've come together tonight to discuss implementation of the Fish and Wildlife Service new vision, Wildlife Refuge for the Refuge System, Conserving the Future Wildlife Refuges in the Next Generation. The vision is built on the foundation and inspiration of fulfilling the promise, which was the vision for the refuge system during uh, the success of the late 1990s and into the first part of this century. The document development uh, involved not only Fish and Wildlife Service employees, but also refuge system friends, NGOs, tribes, states, sportsmen, and the nation's broad conservation community. Um, never before had we, the refuge system, seen the massive conservation conversation that occurred during the Conserving the Future process, including the Madison, Wisconsin conference in, uh, last summer. The final vision was released in October of 2011 and contained 24 recommendations. There are several strong themes throughout the document. The need for strategic, collaborative, science-based landscape conservation, effective public outreach, education and environmental awareness, a goal of making the services workforce more closely reflect the nation's diversity, and a priority for reaching urban America that we've never seen before. The vision charter, which was signed at the Conserving the Future Conference in Madison, Wisconsin, calls for implementation of most of the 24 recommendations to be completed within the next five years, although the vision is gonna guide the refuge system for the next decade. The document is laid into three main chapters. And the first one is wildlife and wild lands. There's 10 recommendations in this chapter. They deal with looking at a top to bottom assessment of all refuge system land protection products or projects, knowing that the lands the service um, has now, they must have uh, strategies that are cutting edge and visionary in placing refuges in the context of landscape conservation. Ooh, excuse me, that was a mouthful. This top to bottom assessment is being conducted by the strategic growth implementation team. It's right now with the refuge system leadership here in the Washington headquarters. And this is expected to be available as a PDF soon. So. I'll go through the website on America's Wildlife where you can find these products if you're interested in, in seeing some of these or seeing this assessment. This chapter also talks about a nationally coordinated effort uh, to inventory and monitor wildlife and habitats so we have the data to inform our planning and management decisions. And most of these recommendations um, are, ta are being implemented by members of the Natural Resource Program Center out in Fort Collins, Colorado. 
chapter two is a connected conservation constituency. And the broad concepts in this chapter deal with public stewardship that cultivates and nurtures our friends groups and community partnerships, as well as a more self-sustaining volunteer corps. And ultimately, we need to create new opportunities for community involvement. This chapter also has the Urban Wildlife Refuge Initiative that identifies excellence in our existing urban refuges and takes those programs that work to create a refuge present in 10 demographically and geographically varied cities across America. A strategic communication plan that allows us to educate the public about our mission and accomplish and create a positive professional brand for the refuge system. This is also in this chapter. And this draft strategic plan is available online on americaswildlife.org. It was released earlier, um, early last week. And so we'll be going over where that plan is housed and how you can provide comments if you're interested or you'd just like to read it for your own benefit. This chapter also looks at the interpretation environmental education strategies and taking advantage of the multiple modes we have to deliver messages to reach diverse audiences. And the final chapter in conserving the future is, the, is to enhance leadership and there are four recommendations that include organizing an evaluation team composed of service and refuge system leaders that identify opportunities for organizational realignments or programmatic efficiencies, and also calls to match the services workforce with the diversity in the civilian labor force. So at this point, I'll offer up, are there any questions about the 24 recommendations in the vision document or anything that's unclear or you're um, unsure of in the document itself? Or any questions that I've just gone over with? Okay, great. So implementation is now in full swing of these 24 recommendations. We have nine teams in the areas of strategic growth, urban wildlife refuge initiatives, leadership, planning, scientific excellence, community partnerships, hunting, fishing, and outdoor recreation, and interpretation and environmental education. Um, all these teams have completed and signed work plans, and they're available online as well. So if you'd like to see the blueprints of where the teams are headed, those are available and online. The team, um, that is tasked with nurturing active and vibrant friends groups is the Community Partnerships Implementation Team, and they are working on Recommendation 11 as well as Recommendation 12. And for folks that are on the webinar, you can see those recommendations there. Some of you are probably very familiar with them at this point. The Community Partnerships Implementation Team has five subteams. They are looking at web tools, staff training, friends partnership mentoring, a handbook to guide volunteers, friends, and community partnership efforts, and a draft strategic plan for volunteers, friends, and community partnerships. I will say that plan is, is very near to being posted as a draft on americaswildlife.org, and so I think now is a critical time to demonstrate how friends can find these products and see them and make comments. There's also going to be a draft Friends Partnership Mentoring Action Plan that builds an all-inclusive partnership mentoring model focusing on the core needs of maintaining Friends Partnerships. And that should be available um, probably in the new year, um, mid-January, on America's Wildlife as well. And so you've heard about the enormous communications effort um, that we've been doing, Facebook, Twitter, we have a, a, a whole website with the help of NWRA, uh, the National Wildlife Refuge Association, uh, americaswildlife.org. But it's mainly been a one-way conversation on this website since the Vision Conference, and so now it's time, time to make it a two-way dialogue again. And so how you can help you as a friend is, is to go on to the americaswildlife.org website, 
join the Community Partnership Social Network, provide comments and, and feedback, and then bring this back to your board, whether it's bring this information you learned tonight or bring this, uh, this webinar that will be uh, available online and, and walk them through it. So there's three ways to provide feedback. There's the social network that I've mentioned probably too many times tonight. I kind of seem to reiterate americaswildlife.org. But that's an option. There's also conserving the future at fws.gov, the email address, or hard mail, the mailing address is provided there here in the Arlington office. To join the social network, um, we'll step through this through uh, online, but I'm just showing here as well to reinforce. You can sign up through your email or through Facebook. And once you're in there, you click on the social network and then on the group, for instance, the Community Partnerships Implementation Team, you can join as many groups as you'd like, as many as you're interested in. There's actually a friends group available on the social network as well. You click on the team and then join the group to become a member. And once you're a member, that's where you can start the discussion topics and post your comments and find the draft products. We'll have a forum section where there will be a discussion thread started on the draft product and you can add to that or you can start your own. So at this point, I'm going to close down the PowerPoint. Before I do, I, I want to ask, are there any questions about the information that was just covered there? For me, it's kind of old hat because I do it a lot. So if there's something that I went too fast over, um, you can ask it now or you can wait till we go through the website and ask it afterwards. Okay. Is there a discussion time? Yeah, we'll have a discussion time at the end unless there's something you'd like to bring up now. I'll wait. Okay. Okay. So at this point, everyone should be seeing AmericasWildlife.org. Well, I've got a plain, uh, sort of a green screen. Yeah, mine's kind of greened out, too. Not mine, yet. Right, mine's a yellow screen. Yeah, I just I just see a bunch of brown, um, like, cross patches. Hmm. Okay. Let me... I see your, your cursor moving, but it's still just a, a single color screen. Are you just looking... Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. All right. Forgive me, I had not pressed share on the top right of this. This is a learning one tonight, so. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we are with uh, the website. And so here is a sign up. On the top white here, I have the hand over it. And this is if you've never signed up or signed into the social network. And so you can create an account here. I'm just going to do a test with an email address test. And then your affiliation, um, if you're with a friends group, be great to put the friends that you are um, affiliated with in there. Here I'll put the service. This information down here, closest refuge, interests, hometown, that's not required. You don't have to put that in there. Um, it helps us to have more information um, for spammers. We get a lot of spammers trying to join this site. And so then you'd put in your account details and go to complete sign up. And at this point, it'll say sign up complete. But before you can be begin using the site, you'll be sent an email to your email address that you gave. And that's for us to prevent spammers from getting in this and hacking the site. So you should receive the email. You know, if you do it Monday through Friday between 8 and 5, you'll receive it probably within an hour. Um, if it was on the weekends or later, it might take a day. 
uh, because we physically have Heather Drew, who is our communication specialist, going in and clicking, you know, yes, you can be a part of this, or, or no, you can't because you're a spammer. So that's why the information helps. To, we ask for a name and affiliation. There's also another way to log in, which is to log in through Facebook. Let me get this out of the way. So for those of you that have a Facebook account, you can put in that information here. That's my preferred way of logging in, but I'm comfortable with Facebook, so you don't you can do either, either of them work. Okay, so now that I'm logged in, I'm just going to go over a little bit about what this site entails. So on the, the home page when you open it, we've got about, that's about conserving the future, the vision, the document, the the team work plans I mentioned earlier, progress reports. Every three months we have a progress report that gives the most up-to-date information about the nine implementation teams. And there's a resources and archives. We have a blog here about every month or maybe sometimes twice a month. An implementation team member or, or someone outside of the vision that's interested in it will write a blog for us and we'll post it on there and they've had discussion threads. And then we have the social network and how to um, join the activity in the groups. Then here is the, um, this is what we'll call the current news and the draft products. And this is the updates. So right now we only have the draft communications plan available and so that's why it's just a static picture of that. Um, and then to the right of it is the news feed with daily updates from Facebook and Twitter coming in there. Farther down on this site, it's the same information I showed you on the on this bar. It's just um, with a picture and and easier to click to if you're more comfortable that way than than finding it through the bar. So I'm going to click on the communications plan picture that we have here, and it'll take you to a site that says draft products, talking a little bit more about the social network, um, how to submit comments and down to the current draft product, which is the draft communications plan. It's going to be available online from December 3rd until January 16th of 2013. I can't believe it's already almost 2013. <laughs> and so when you click on the group, this is where it gets a little tricky and we're trying to to make it more direct, but we want to make sure everyone has full information of how to join the group. That's why we can't just give a link directly to the document. So the document is here. And when you're signed in, um, you can download it right off here. It's in a PDF form. And if you want, I can, I can click on it. I wasn't going to up upload it, but I can. Um, and then you can write something comments here. If you weren't logged in, there wouldn't be any box where my cursor is right here saying what's new in communications. There wouldn't be anything there. And then here in the forum is where we have um, comments on the draft communication strategic plan and you can um, click follow that and get new um, emails when there's new posts following that conversation. So you can actually have an online conversation and get updates from other members um, logging in and, and starting comments on there. So there's a bunch of different ways to, to leave your comments. Each team has identified at least two people to follow the comments, maybe even react if there's a question on the page, but to, to try and create some dialogue between the users that are on there and the team members who've posted that draft product. Um, and finally, I'll just say that if you don't want to mess with the social network or you're uncomfortable with going through this process, that you can email conservingthefuture at fws.gov and we'll send you the draft products directly and you can, 
you know, send them back through the mail or send them back via email. So we're trying to make this process as easy and as comfortable for those that may not be familiar with a social network or online. I just want to say thank you all for calling in and and seeing this process live and providing your feedback and I'm coming away with some <laughs> some great ideas to continue this forward and for those of you that were at Friends Academy, you know, thanks for suggesting to do the webinars because I think it's a great idea and a, and a time for me to interact and hear from friends live and and I appreciate that. So Everyone have a great night and thank you. You're right. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Good night. Okay, good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye.